Well hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at colour mixing for skies. Um, we've got, obviously when you look out in the countryside and uh, um, whatever photographs you have, you can see a wide variety of skies and really every day is different. That is the beauty of landscape painting. Skies make a big difference to the landscape colouring and also the form and shape of everything. You can have uh, a real sunny sky. In that respect you get lots of shadows, uh, you get lots of light on your subjects. You can get a cloudy day with outbreaks of sunshine where the clouds you can see sweep a shadow across the landscape. That's what we call atmosphere. Uh, it gives that landscape that bit of atmosphere. There's all sorts of skies. There's obviously a complete dull, uh, damp, dreary day, and um, that can be a very can be very good to paint. Um, and of course, there's some um, the sunsets as well. You know. There's early morning, there's late evening. Uh, so today I want to run through uh, a series of skies. We're going to create a real sunny sky. We're going to also create a sky that has a little bit of cloud. We're going to then create quite a lot of cloud with the odd little patch of um, blue sky then finally we're going to look at a subject with a sunset okay let's get started well here we go then let's have a look at the materials I'm working in my small garden studio this morning and uh, very pleasant out here you hear all sorts of noises um, but um, it's uh, you know, looking out onto the garden with the flowers and what have you, I just walked around as I came in. Um, so let's look at the materials. Um, we do have a row of colours. Now this is the palette I will be using. I will use leave the row of colours there so that you can actually um, see them a little better. You may have this type of, the one I recommended, where you've squeezed out the paint into the varying sections and, if necessary, mark them off with their appropriate colours so that um, you can see exactly um, how they're um, laid out. So, um, and I would suggest that you lay them out with raw sienna first, cadmium yellow, because these are the main colours I will be using, burnt sienna, so it's raw sienna, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, burnt umber, olizarin crimson, cadmium red, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and Windsor blue, or if you've got the Cotman, it would be Prussian blue. So that's the way I would that way I would lay them out because you've got your yellows, two yellows, two browns, two reds, and we've actually got three blues. That one is not going to be used within the course, and that one is the Payne's grey that I only use when I demonstrated the sketching techniques. You will need a 2B pencil uh, or equivalent, it doesn't have to be a 2B, it can be HB, 2B, 3B, somewhere around that. Putty rubber may be useful because as you do your drawing you may need just to adjust things. You obviously have um, three brushes, the number 12, the number 8, and the number six. Tubes of paint that hopefully you've already squeezed into your palette uh, so that they've gone 
uh, relatively hard. Took a couple of pieces of kitchen paper or tissue. Um, so that's really the main thing. And of course the water jar with clean water in to start. Just one other thing, you will need your paper. Now I've got, just move that out the way. Just move those over and the paints. There we go. That's perfect. Put them there. We can then see what we've got. Good. Now, I did suggest that you actually use uh, a pad if you wish. This is my old, um, let's just turn that over. This is my sketching pad. It's from the Pink Pig Company here in the UK. Maybe uh, it's not as readily available in the US, but um, it's an online company, so you can always uh, try the availability. If you do use, you can use any other. It doesn't have to be Pink Pig, but Pink Pig do the Bockingford paper that I would recommend. But there again, it doesn't have to be Bockingford paper. Any good quality watercolour paper would be quite sufficient. If you are working from a pad, then you can use tape to tape the corners. But if not, you can always use a couple of very small clips like that. Here we go then. Well, I've actually used a piece of Bockingford paper, but you can, as I say, it can be Langton, it can be any good quality, 140 pound not surface watercolour paper. It has to be watercolour paper because um, it's got to take a little bit of water. At the side here I've actually got my brushes laid out but I've got another small piece of watercolour paper. It's always useful to test the colours before you go straight in. Now the first thing I want you to do is to take your pencil Although we're painting mainly um, skies, we do need some land. So let's put a little bit of land, and it doesn't have to be that even, like that. And onto that land, a bit of a hump there, so we're going to just quickly design, um, let's put a, a, a small tree. There we go. Just a small tree. Like that in the distance um, we will have another couple of trees there and a bit of hedging perhaps like that uh, there you go good so that's our foreground but first we're going to put the sky on because the sky is the main part of this a little subject that we're painting. Good. First thing you need to do is to damp your brush. Into your water. You start at the top of the paper in the centre and just keep flowing the water onto the paper like that. Now the key to this is that, just bring the water round to the front, that you actually keep adding water and working your way down. Okay, so you come down just a small way from the top of the paper, then you start to add colour.
Then we put a stroke of that across the top. A nice strong mix right the way across the top of the paper. Go into our paint again and back onto the paper. Just keep running across the paper like that. And once you get about a quarter of the way down, it starts to get a bit dry. So what you do, you add water to that and then it starts to spread again. There you go, look at that. And if you will notice, it's gradually getting lighter. Just dropped a spot onto the landscape. Add more water and it gets lighter still. So I've worked my way right the way down to the bottom of the sky. And quite often that is quite sufficient. We just need to allow that to completely dry. And this green, like a yellowy green really, you sweep across the bottom of the paper. It is pretty much dry now. Then I add a little cadmium yellow. And you'll find that turns much richer. So like yellowy green. And then to the yellow, I put a little more blue. And that will give us even a deeper green, slightly deeper, nothing too green. A bit more blue, don't add too much blue. And even a touch more blue in the foreground, like that. And then just allow that to dry. Good, well you now have completed your first sky, if you're a beginner. You've created a wet onto dry graduated wash down to the horizon line. Then you've created a graduated wash of yellow and blues to create the greens in the foreground. So there again we're looking at tone again, we're looking at Dark, slowly through to medium, through to very light. The sort of sunny sky with perhaps a little haziness, the sort of thing you may get in the summer. Then along the horizon, you've painted in raw sienna with a touch of the cobalt, the ultramarine that you had in the sky. So it's raw sienna and ultramarine. Then you've added a little cadmium to that, cadmium yellow and then as you've worked forward you've added a little more ultramarine blue and all of a sudden it turns slightly darker green so you've gone dark through to very light and then medium through to a little darker so it's all it's, it's color but it's contrast so raw sienna ultramarine in the in the distance Adding cadmium yellow to that will 
give you a richer green because it is naturally a richer yellow. And then if you add more blue to that rich yellow, you get a slightly more darker, intense green. So that's the theory behind that. Now once that is completely dry, which it is now, I'm going to mix ultramarine blue with a touch of alizarin crimson. I'm looking for a, like a, a distant purpley silhouette -y, uh, sort of colour not ideal description but that's what I'm looking for and then just painting a simple tree like that okay so that is our darker tree now I'm going to add raw sienna to that and it will go slightly greeny grey This will then be used for the trunk. Any sort of, just drop a bit of that into that blue because it helps to give it depth. Another tree there, a couple of smaller trees, a bit of hedging. One or two little trees showing above, the, above that hedging. Like that, a little cluster of like a woodland area, I suppose, like a wooded area. No perspective really in this, we're just playing around with shapes. But that's all you need. And then we come off into the distance, and this tree is going to sit where some hedging is. Like that, another little sort of tree there. As the bus brush runs out of paint, then sometimes it is beneficial because you get a slightly deeper or slightly lighter sorry wash of color and all of a sudden you've created the feeling of a lovely sky with a large tree looking out to the horizon just to finish it off clean the brush thoroughly and pick up some of that very light blue purple colour and just stroke across the distance and that is your distant land because land appears blue in the distance and just bring it up that side and you've got yourself a little bit of a, a mountain in the distance And hey presto, you have produced your first landscape painting. Well there you have your first landscape painting. And all I do, I take a mount and just put over the top, like that. And that frames it very, very nicely. So it's always useful to get yourself a mount cut to the size of uh, of the paper you're working to because once you lay a mount over the top as you can see you do uh, sort of frame it really and this is what I will be doing after every single um, painting that I do okay so that is a simple blue sky with some distant land okay well I'm going to paint a cloudy sky now with some sun. So we're going to, we have to show a few blue patches uh, to indicate that the sun is shining. Not difficult to do. You take water. As you can see, it's not completely clean, but you can use clean water. And you damp the paper. I'm using a little bit of colour in my water, just purely so you can see where I'm damping, really. And 
because it's very very light you won't actually get you won't actually see it at the end anyway because it dries so light and all you do you sweep a cloth like that and I'm damping this is what they call wet into wet I'm damping the paper right the way down and notice how I keep keep dipping into the water because it's vital that you don't allow the paper to dry too early for this particular um, exercise. Notice I'm going back in again and adding a little more water to the top because that's the area that it dries out much quicker. So make certain you've added plenty of water to the surface. Right, while that's soaking in, I'm going to use Ultramarine for the blue again. A reasonable strength, so not too much water in that. Load the brush, although we're only painting a small area. And while it's still damp, we're going to have an area of blue there. And quite a big area there, perhaps. Yep. And notice how I'm pressing into the paper and turning the brush. If you can develop that technique, it won't flood around too much. Now, to that, I'm going to add burnt umber. And this will give us a grey for the grey underpainting of the sky. And this wants to be fairly weak at this stage. So we've got our blue patches in. Now we've got to produce the grey. Start in the top right hand corner and paint around the blue like that. Bit more water, reload, paint into the blue there and into that blue there. There we are. So, a little bit more water as you come down. See how it's grey and there's our main cloud with a little bit of blue. Okay, and as we come down into the lower area, add even more water. Cross like that until it's very, very, very weak. Good. Now allow that to soak in, while that's soaking in, clean the brush, touch it onto kitchen towel or kitchen uh, tissue so that you don't put have too much water. Now I'm going to use ultramarine again with burnt umber and if you notice I'm using more paint. So that will give you a much stronger mix. And not too much water with this mix. There we go. Look at that. It is, you know, it's all about mixing. But I prefer that you learn to mix as you paint. Because you do end up with a sky at the end of it. Now, where do we want the deep shadow? Uh, you know, the darker cloud. Well, we'll put one at the top there. Painting around that blue again and leaving the white. Go in again and take some more colour. We'll have a really, you know, fairly darker section just there. We'll have a, just a touch more there, shall we, as it runs out of picture. That's nice. And just taper that off. Don't have too many rounded edges so that the, the clouds sort of run across the landscape. Now we can add a little more water and take a little off on the side of the pot because we don't want too many really dark areas otherwise we won't appreciate the light areas. So there's, And remember when you paint clouds a little bit of cloud shadow within that blue when you paint clouds 
clouds appear smaller as they go away into the distance. Run that out of picture. There we are. And then we just quite simply paint an even smaller clouds here. And all of a sudden we get a lovely feel of depth. Notice how I'm just just dropping the colour into that damp paper. Vital that you don't overdo this. A little bit in the distance there. And I'm just going to allow that to completely dry. Now don't be tempted to go back in with the brush at all. Allow that to dry. If you have ended up with a few hard edges, you'll, the, the more you paint, the easier it will be to produce those softer edges wet in wet. But on the other hand, um, it's always best to leave them. You know, paint a few of these skies and they'll all be totally different. I mean, yours will never repeat exactly what I've done, but that's the general idea. Blue, some white, but all the rest is an underpainting of grey. Then a stronger grey mix for the darker clouds. And all of a sudden, it's just beginning to dry now, and it will tone back, it will all soften, and these edges will soften. It's difficult when you're learning wet into wet to produce that sort of um, sky, but um, with practice and using those techniques, there's no reason why you should not be successful. Now, a sky like this never looks right without landscape. So you can paint lots of skies, but I always suggest that you put landscape in as well and we're going to put a similar landscape as we had before really we're going to put in the uh, trees in the distance perhaps a little hill as well but before we do that let's get in the foreground grass and we're going to use the same again ultramarine with raw sienna the dull quite dull yellow Nice, plenty of water in this one, and we're going wet on to dry again, like that. Add more water, a little more raw sienna, and keep that wash, that, that bead of water hanging along the bottom edge. Now I'm adding more raw sienna with a touch more blue, ultramarine. That's what you need. There we are. See that edge of dark water paint, watery paint. If you can keep that going, you're on to a winner. Now we take off more water. Notice I'm not cleaning the brush every time. That really is my technique because you want a graduated wash. If you need a completely different colour, then obviously you need to change the brush but you, all you need is to affect the color as you go more blue now sorry more yellow and of course more blue as we did before cadmium yellow more blue in the mix a little bit more blue in the mix whoops too much that's what you've got to be careful of and that gives you a nice strong green and that will be the green in the foreground Notice how I always bring a darker green into the foreground because it's a natural thing you would see on a field purely because colours appear bluer, less intense in the distance. As you work your way forward, they always appear more richer. So it's not only perspective that gives your landscape depth, it's also the colour. Well, there we have it. I've allowed that to completely dry. It's vital that your 
everything is dry now so it's all touch dry finally I'm going to put on the trees um, with the number six a slightly smaller brush sorry number eight a slightly smaller brush and quite simply we're going to use the ultramarine with a touch of raw sienna so just where the ultramarine was mixed you now need to remix into a clean another clean section uh, you can do but you know you've got paint in the palette no sense in wasting that so it's a blue green so we'll put in a bluey green tree there try and give the impression of the outside edges branches overhanging if you watch the technique I use the point of the brush lots of techniques to create ch trees but you know that's uh, pretty much all you need then I'm going to add burnt umber and just pop that to a separate part of the palette because that's going to be my trunk area there we go now I'm going back into the blue again and I'm adding cadmium just a touch so play with these mixes see what colors you achieve and that's going to be sort of like a another tree there remember how we put in some some different trees using different mix this time but no need to um, to keep with the same mixes keep it quite flat where it meets the the other tree like that there we are and as I said when you get clouds you get sweeping shadows so it's not all light now I'm adding a little bit more brown to that a little bit more blue to create some browny green trees this side just to ring the changes play with the colors it's really tone as I think I've mentioned this quite a lot it's tone that really gives the shape and form to your um, to your landscapes and this is only just a rough sort of landscape distant hedging maybe some odd little bit of hedging just there right in the distance good so that's really all you need for that but of course thing we must remember that we do have clouds so it's not all sunny in the foreground and how do we achieve that we mix up another green like that we quite simply take a large brush just wet it cloud shadow okay that's all in cloud in shadow then we come to a sunlit area that we've just painted in now we want another cloudy area so damp that across there you can probably see that shine so that's damp don't paint into the damp area paint up to see where I'm painting up to and when it does it goes soft and where that soft edge is just spread some color and that will all of a sudden and then just taper it off all of a sudden you have a soft edged shadow let's put another one here a little bit smaller so damp the paper paint into the lower area of that damp color and then just gradually taper it off like that look at that all of a sudden we're getting foreground shadows and then we just add a little bit more blue a little bit more cadmium quite a dark shadow this one and let's let's there again damp that again just damp it across like that and sweep this dark shadow into the foreground 
and you can almost blend it with that if you wish. And that's the way you produce these lovely atmospheric landscapes. And while I have that colour, let me just sweep a little across the landscape there, just to give the, the impression there's a bit of shadow from those trees, but that's optional. Look at that. Perfect. And if you really wish to, once that distant land has completely dried there, just take ultramarine again with a touch of the yellow in there, not too much. So a distant land, not too much on the brush for this, just take a little off. And let's put a, a distant hill. Come up like that and across and down between those trees. Up like that, under that tree and across there. And there is your misty, hazy, distant tree with a small shadow, uh, cloud just hanging over. Brilliant. Allow that all to dry. Don't be tempted to put any grasses, any fine detail. If you've got anywhere near this, you have now completed your first cloudy sky with a bit of atmosphere on the landscape. As always, once dry, let's sign the painting with our name. Using pencil for this, but you could use watercolour. I normally do on my major paintings. And then take your mount, if you have one, and drop that over the top. And there you have your first landscape painting of a cloudy sky, distant hills, and middle distant, sort of semi-silhouetted trees. Okay, now let's take a look at a sunset. Now this is going to be interesting. Um, quite easy to produce. Wet into wet again. If you notice we've been doing a lot of wet into wet because you must learn to control the paint on a wet surface to give yourself a good chance of producing a clean watercolour. It's the amount of water you put on the paper that is vital to the final outcome. Too much and the paint will just flood across the paper. Obviously the board is at that angle. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on this um, card that I made early on in the, um, in the demonstration, the one I take uh, away with me. So I made another one specifically for this um, scene or these sets of demonstrations good now that's thoroughly wet in the normal way i've just swept water across making certain you notice how i went back up the top right okay now first thing you need for a sunset is a deep blue now the deepest blue we have is windsor blue you see what I mean when I get it on there? See how very dark that is. Winds are blue. And I'm going to use the... Let's use the cadmium red. Because that will give us a real dark sort of blue sky that you will see on a sunset right at the top of the paper. There we are. Look at that. And I'm making it really, really dark. So let's use plenty of paint. Not too much water because the paper is damp. Just begin to cockle a little. So let's see if we can just keep that down. That can happen. Didn't quite catch up correctly. There you go. Right. Let's apply that very dark. Look how dark that is. It is very, very dark. Look at that. 
Isn't that fantastic? That he's winds are blue. Could be Prussian if that's the one you've got. Right. Now as we come down, I'm going to clean the brush. So that's our real dark evening, late sort of sunset evening sky. Then I'm going to take up quite a bit of that red, not as dense, and I'm going to streak it across there like that. Just have a bit of fun with the paint. Just streak it across. There we are. Look at that. Clean the brush again. We want it to get lighter as we come down. Now I'm going to pick up yellow. We start at slightly dull greeny yellow with the with the red. So we create a dull orange. Not too damp in this case. Look at that. Then right in the distance, I'm going to clean the brush thoroughly and just a little red and just touch it on, just check that that's the right. And I'm putting that in there. Look at that. Okay. So we've got different bands of colour. A bit more cadmium. Just stroking in here and there. You know how you get this, these sunsets? And you get the lovely streaks of red running across the sky. Have a bit of fun, as I say, with this one. There you have it. Clean the brush. Now, this is where... This is something that we've never done before, but we will do because I feel it's always good to learn. Take a piece of kitchen paper, create a little ball like that. So it's sort of as round as you can get it. Just form it like that. Where do we want the sun? Well, let's pick up the sun on the horizon, not far from the large tree, just up of centre to the left. And just twist and lift off colour. <coughs> just going to turn that paper again, produce another little ball, just to make certain we get it nice and dry. Just give it a twist. If you twist it, it makes it rounded. There is the sun in the distance. Now, all we really need to do now, I prefer to put the landscape on while the sky is still damp. Now, the landscape will be a combination of the cadmium yellow that we've already used, the light red, already used but a bit more cadmium yellow and a touch of the Prussian blue so just dive in there so it's sort of like a green and that will sweep right the way under there like that that creates a base for the Sun to sit on then we add more red more blue so it's, it's, it's sort of like a greeny grey. We've almost made a brown, really. Then we add more blue. Let's just take a bit more blue from there. There we are. Let's take it from the palette there. Because I want the blue to be, the, 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 the colour to be quite, quite dark as we go into, you know, we're reversing it. Dark through to light, then light through to dark. That way you get the lovely sense of a sunset. A bit more, a little bit of green, a bit of red. There we are. That's a nice dull brown. Now any dark colour would produce the colour you're looking for. A bit more blue in the foreground. There you go. Look at that. What a perfect sunset. 
all you need to do now is to allow that to go completely dry. Well that's completely dry, just check that with the back of the hand, yes that feels nice and dry. Okay, now all we've got to do now is to put in our silhouetted um, trees and distant land. And all we do for that, take the number 8 round and it's got to be it's not very very dark really so not too much water on the brush and you can go into just pick up a drier area there but we'll you know you notice how I don't clean the palette because I'm going from light through to dark there's no real need to keep cleaning the palette really but it's it's you know it's something that is quite optional um, some people do but I just try and use some of the paint that's already on there really uh, it's all about t as I say tone is more important to me than color but obviously color is quite important right Windsor blue or Prussian if you've got that one and we're going to use the red and those are two colors that will give us the really dark sort of silhouette like colour. And let's go one tone darker than that. And plenty of red in there so it's a, it's a warm dark colour not a blue cool dark colour. There we are. Right, let's just see what that does. Not too much paint on the brush, it's just lose a little from the side of the palette. Right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to paint in this dark, this large tree again. Fairly freely little tricks I'm going to show you now go over the sun area like that so that will be very very dark trying to pick up the shape of branches overhanging that sun area working my way down and I'm going to put the trunk in with that same colour now the trick here is to lightly damp a smaller brush that's your number six so it's not loaded with water but it's just damp that way it wants to draw in paint if it's too wet then it wants to put the water onto the paper if it's partly dry see how it's lifting off color just make certain you don't clean it again, take off most of the moisture and then pick off and that will suck the paint off. And what I'm doing, I'm creating a shape within that area that will give us the effect of the sun glaring on the side of that um, so it's lifting off colour that's what we're doing not laying on colour this time we're lifting away colour let's just lift away a little bit more right on those edges there and there and all of a sudden you've got a sense that there's sunlight coming through those areas that side of the tree just try lifting off a little more once it dries you'll be able to see that there we are perfect look at that A little bit up the top too. Put on the top there. Brilliant. And just to give those really highlights right on the edge, take a little kitchen towel or tissue and just touch on those outside edges. And all of a sudden they light up even lighter. Perfect. 
and all of a sudden you've got a fan of light on the right hand side of that tree. Next we take the same brush, same colour. Now we can produce the, um, the same technique really. We've got a clump of greenery there, or well, it would be green if we could see it wasn't in silhouette, like that. It's good exercise this to learn to lift off colour. Really is good. Paint as quickly as you can. Not too sure, keen, sure that the colour of the um, or the shape of the trees are that important. The main thing is you get the point of a kitchen towel and you just lift off one side like that before it dries. Simple as that. All of a sudden you've got a feel of sunlight catching and let's just soften this, clean the brush again. There's all different techniques that you probably won't pick up straight away, but it's always good to to show you. You know, it may even be a bit of distant land there. There we are, let's paint that in with that very light colour. Going across the sun, look at that. Brilliant. That works. And then we carry on. Same technique, dark colour again, let's add a little more red, ring the changes a bit. A bit more water for this one. Another tree, try not to make your trees too, too much the same colour. And a bit of hedging as we go out of picture. A bit of perhaps a wooded area, something like that. And same technique again, lifting off on the left hand side there and the left hand side there just sponging away some colour right on the top and there you go look at that a lovely clump of trees with some uh, sort of um, sunlight catching the, the left hand sides now we're going to do the left hand trees exactly the same picking up the blue and the red like that same mix and we're going to paint these trees lifting off as we did before really but this time I'm going to show you exactly how to lift off these because these are we lift these off in a different sort of size really with the idea of perspective do need to have these trees that run out of pi pi picture help pull the eye in um, there we are and just before they dry you could take your kitchen towel again find a little corner just turn it until you get a sharp point and you lift away but this time you're lifting away the right hand side just like that look at that isn't that absolutely brilliant so you know watercolor painting isn't all about laying color on it is a little bit about lifting color off now all that remains is produce really um, some long shadows really in the uh, you know obviously if the sun is behind then we've got shadows coming forward they're not too difficult so let's use the winter blue and the red but this time more red I want the red to to fairly dominate because we're looking at the ground it's cadmium red okay we don't want to be as dark as the trees and just take a little bit off of them. And what we're going to do, we're going to use that uh, that old trick of um, damping an area. So we're going to damp an area from there, under there to there. Then we're going to paint our shadow in under 
those trees like that and allow that to soften like that. We're going to damp this as well, very similar at an angle because of perspective, got to remember perspective. And then we're going to paint that in as well with a well loaded brush. Just paint up into those trees like that and bring that across. Look at that. And then just gently lift off where the sun is. And all of a sudden you get that glare effect again. Look at that. That's perfect. Now we need, while we have that paint on the brush, I'm going to paint the shadow from the tree. And that's going to go sort of fairly long actually. But this time it's going to come right down into the foreground. And just to soften it, take a damp brush and just sweep through it right from where it meets just sweep through it like that there we are all of a sudden you've got the sense of light coming from the background where the sun is well there we have it i've put the mount over the top all i need to do now is sign it and i'm signing it in a black pen so that we can see it. Permanent ink. And that now is how you paint a sunset. Right, let's just recap on what we've looked at. We started off with a straightforward blue sky, graduating down wet into wet, to a very very light blue along the horizon. We've looked at painting trees in a silhouette against a, quite a dark distant hill and then of course a light foreground. So the sky was wet in wet, the foreground was wet onto dry, the board was at an angle like that so that all the as you painted the water ran down and the paint and we know you notice how I kept it very very wet right the way through then I allowed the sky to dry before I put in the very wet wash in the foreground adding to the color as I come forward to make it slightly stronger and I'm sure as you can see it dries so much lighter so unless you're you're can be brave enough to get as dark as I did then you don't quite get that tone effect. The second painting was this more atmospheric scene. Uh, wet into wet sky again, damp the paper, board at a bit of an angle so that the water runs down into the foreground or the, lo the lower part of the sky, damp the paper completely then I'll put in two strong blue patches, one there and one there. Then I mixed a grey using the blue that I used in the sky plus burnt umber. And then I painted in the cloud work. And if you notice the clouds are actually darker uh, at the top and lighter as they come down. And also the 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 clouds at the top are that cloud perspective well they call it aerial perspective you get the dark clouds at large dark clouds at the top lighter clouds and progressively smaller as you go away into the distance that gives that sky depth you have those big clouds right in the distance doesn't doesn't look as if there's any depth in the sky then we mixed up some dull greens and produced a bit of distant land some hedging uh, the odd tree then we did uh, a wet foreground, wet onto dry as we did in the first one. Um, then once that completely dries, we damped a couple of areas and painted into the, the, uh, the lower part of those damp areas to try and get the feeling that 
there was atmosphere in the landscape. So that's how you do atmospheric landscapes. You know, I mean, all these marvellous, you know, all these very, very skilled artists, they just use those same techniques. It's a little more complicated, but if you can master that technique, you can create really atmospheric landscapes. And then finally, we looked at a lovely sunset. Um, and not that difficult to get to come off, actually. It's, um, it's worked out quite successful. Um, very deep, dark blue at the top. It was a, a Windsor blue or Prussian blue, if that's the one you're using, with cadmium red. Uh, notice how dark it was when I played it on. But if you look closely now, it's once it dries, it all tones back. So it's getting that depth of colour. In other words, how much paint against water. If you're looking for a darker colour, it's more paint, less water. You're allowing less of the paper to shine through the wash. Uh, if you want it very wheat, very light, then obviously you just leave uh, uh, leave out the, the amount of paint and just add more water. And of course, all the light areas, including the sun, is actually white paper. So we washed that in cadmium a uh, yellow uh, cadmium red. And then I put some cadmium yellow in. And that gives us like an orangey glow in the uh, bottom part of the sky where the sun would be. Uh, and just before that dried, we got kitchen paper, tissue, and we lifted off that area of the sun. And it's almost white now. Then I painted in the trees and using that same method, we lifted off before it was dry, the sides where the sun would catch. So it's the right hand side of that one, the right hand sides of these, but of course, because we're the other side of the sun, it's the left hand sides of these. And then all of a sudden, while they're still wet, lift off while it's still wet, it's so much easier, then all of a sudden you've got that lovely feeling of a sunset. And then we use that um, damping method, damped a couple of areas, painted into the dry area, then in just into the damp area, and that creates a blurred image uh, of the shadows. You know, we didn't, I didn't want to put shadows on each one and get very, very complicated because, as you can see, it works without it. And then the same with the the, the, the large shadow from the tree. If you notice that is in perspective too, that's your perspective. It tapers to under the tree. If you just make it the same size, it doesn't look right. It, uh, you know, and it has to slope towards the sun. It doesn't stand perfectly upright. It slopes towards the sun because that's where the light source is coming from. So it's, it's, it's at a slight angle. And of course, we painted the foreground before we um, we did all the uh, trees and what have you. And uh, a similar method to what we used on the other two paintings. And that is now a sunset. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed that look at basic landscape painting. Skies, really, that was the object of this um, exercise. I hope you've enjoyed that. We'll see you all again very shortly.